Jody Holtzman of AARP here at the Digital Health Summit with uh, Dr. Oz and Jeff Arnold. Jeff Arnold. Um, so, uh, first of all, thank you uh, for participating in the AARP magazine o I love the, I over the years. Well, you have 35 million people reading a magazine. You should participate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you're when you're involved, the the the, the quote sales go up. So. Um, AARP has been focused on uh, two things of late. One is this notion of life reimagined. And it's premised on the, the idea that in the 20th century, we've added 30 years to people's lives. But they're 30 years not at the end of life. They're 30 years in the middle of life, active life, vibrant life. So it's really a new life stage. If you look at the population of this demographic with that idea, how do you kind of tie in digital health, technology, because to enjoy it, you have to be healthy, right? Well, let me start this off. I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. Jeff started WebMD and how stuff works. You know, when we first started my show, Oprah introduced us thinking, you know what? You can make a television show, but people are going to need more information behind it to deal with just what you're saying. How do you live those middle years even better? How do you customize solutions that work for you? So we've been collaborating a lot. Obviously, we do DrOz.com together, but ShareCare, which shares the care, is the really the bigger entity, and it does exactly what you're arguing for. It takes the lives of people in the middle, those 30 years that we get extra now, which is exactly what happened over the last 100 years, and we begin to build value in it, and we give hope to people. Remember, hope is not just you know, praying the, good, the right things happen to you. Hope is about making sense of what is happening to you. So if you've got a diagnosis, Let's say you have cancer. Now remember, cancer death rates continue to drop, but the number of people getting cancer keeps going up. So we've got a lot of folks out there who are survivors, and they live in fear, understandably, of getting the cancer again or not being able to survive their cancer. How do we take general information of the nature that I deliver on the show, and when needed, drill down and get real people to talk to you about it? So you have to create a social architecture for that. You've got to make it easy for folks to find information from other doctors, from friends, from dietitians, from people who can give you meaningful advice, impactful advice, to make your fifth decade seem like your third decade of life. Well, I think you know, one of the things that Dr. Oz was the creator of is uh, Real Age, uh, which is part of ShareCare that you know, 30 million people have taken the test. And the whole idea is you take this test and you talk about your lifestyle and family history, tells you what your calendar age is, I mean your body age, not your calendar age. And then with that information, now that we send you targeted videos, targeted content, targeted programs, targeted experts, so that you can start to add days back on to your body age. And we have found that to be, from an engagement standpoint, one of the most effective ways uh, to reach people because they like the instant gratification of knowing what their body age is and they like the relevant information of how to add days back to their life. So when one of the, th the hopes of all of this technology and changed behavior is that at the end of the day there'll actually be costs taken out of the health system. Yes. Right? <laughs> get, well, and as a result of having better health outcomes. Are you starting to see evidence of those the health outcomes part of the, the graph starting to to move up or what's what's needed? What are the obstacles that have to get out of the way for that to happen? Well, just to be clear about money and health care, the most expensive care is bad care. There's a saying in Turkish, which is where my family's from, you put one coin into a well, which a fool can do. It takes a hundred wise men to get it back out again. So we create lots of problems for ourselves. We don't have easy flow of information and we cannot get quality ideas out there rapidly. I don't see that improving quite yet. It's certainly not as fast as we hoped it would. Life expectancy for folks who did not graduate from high school, just released this past week, is decreasing. It's decreased about five years over the last generation. Now, if you've went to college or high school, you actually live longer. So there's a little bit of a split happening there. We do see some improvement in cancer death rates, but we still have more cancers. So these are all factors that, that pull us in different directions. Fundamentally, what we have to do is, is empower people with information that changes their life. And then, most importantly, make it easy for them to use that information. And by doing that, at least a half of the healthcare budget gets drained away because it's related to chronic illnesses like obesity. And when we begin to do that, we'll start to see seismic shifts and how we take care of people and how we reimburse for that care. Right. And um, how do you move people from information to action, right? So they, you know, they need to lose weight, they need to sleep better, they need to relieve their stress, they got to reverse their diabetes, get rid of their back pain. And there's all these evidence-based programs that live offline today, built by ARP, built by Johns Hopkins and others. How do we start to take these gamification techniques, bring those evidence-based medicine programs online, so we go from people reading information to actually empowering them to take the steps, and then measure those steps to see if it actually improved outcomes. You see that happening like with mobile health and I think it can only happen through mobile health because if I'm walking down here and I'm about to reach for something on the shelf behind you and this goes off, 
right. right? In whatever form it is, this is living with me. What's going to happen in the next five years is this becomes my healer. This is there to just push me a little bit to one direction or the other, to move my fingers just a little bit from this part of the shelf to that part, to not reach for that extra piece of pie, to, to remind me about something I should have done, like take a walk. And this becomes ultimately the tool that I need to nudge all of us in the right direction. Jeff is empowering healers to provide that information. And AR, the WRP, I think, is one of those organizations because it is such a huge representative of who we are in America that will adopt these early, which is what you're doing, and get, as thought leaders, all of us headed in the right direction. And if you think of AARP and you think of the Dr. Oz show and you think of convergence, right? It's like, how, how are we going to move from the living room to now walking around with the exam room? Do you see that happening? Yes, I think without question, we will begin to win the battle, as Jeff is articulating, in our living room, in our bedroom, in our kitchen, because we're meeting people there, which is ultimately where the, the battle has to be won anyway. It's not going to be won in my doctor's office uh, or legislative capitals or in Washington, D.C. It's going to happen when I'm looking at my refrigerator, which we all do, <laughs> open the door, and I'm looking in there, and I say, what am I going to take? Right. And those kinds of decisions we, we need support for. Your, your, me your message is always an optimistic one, and, and we, we just met, but, but I'm guessing you're a pretty optimistic you know, kind of person. So looking at this issue, the healthcare system, five years out, optimistic? Very optimistic. I, I'm very happy that I'm alive right now because I'm going to witness with everyone else who can hear my voice the biggest change in medicine ever. We're going to be able to connect the dots on things that we sort of got right but not quite and completely redesign things we got wrong. And that's going to happen primarily because technology is going to marry the user experience. And when they get together, and that's what sharing care is all about, breaking down silos that have kept the engineers away from the folks who should be actually marketing the ideas in the right way, we'll begin to create smarter solutions. Listen, every complex problem, which healthcare is, has a very simple solution. It tends to be wrong. <laughs> you need smart people who can think of complex answers because they'll be the ones that we need to, to go into the next decade. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Stay well. Pleasure. Thank you.